Spooky Saturday. Um, y'all like y'all like a little light in the back right there. Yeah, I like that thing. Hold on, that hold on, that ain't giving uh, that ain't giving me spooky vibes. Let's go ahead, let's go ahead, change that up. Change it up. Change that up. I said change it up. All right, all right, there we go. Um, uh, hope y'all got y'all snacks. Uh, we actually just came from dinner, so we ain't even gonna. We ain't even gonna be snacking on nothing tonight, but this first video uh, is by Denny Animations. Two, uh, it's two of them actually. Two disturbing girlfriend and wife stories animated. I'm a, I, I read that wrong. Before I start, I feel like I should let something be very clear. I absolutely love Ellen. We've been what? living together for about three years now, but have known each other our whole lives. In fact, we were childhood friends. And I, I know this may sound like a fairy tale to some people, but it truly felt like we were always destined to be together. It's Even the after graduation, when we started dating other people. Cut changing sides it's every that. time. Hold on, every time he changes, every time he turns his head, the haircut changes sides. But the split though. Just, just pay attention. It's we like were a with each other. So I don't know See what, what I mean. It's so changing sides every time. I'm really glad I did. We have the same taste in music, movies, and even food. We laugh at the same dumb jokes and know exactly how it's to moving, each other his head is, His hair is She's moving. She's the kindest, most gentle, and loving girl I ever met. We even been talking about our plans for marriage and how we would like to have kids of our own. That's why it hurts uh -huh. so much how it all went terribly wrong in just four nights. I would also like to preface that Ellen doesn't have much of a family other than me and some very distant aunts that she never met and doesn't even know their names. I was born in a big family with four siblings and plenty of cousins that were always visiting and even helping hey, what a, not what a face is. <laughs> Ella has none of that. She doesn't have any siblings and her father was an alcoholic, abusive freak that died when she was young. Oh. Her mother was a very kind and inspiring person. Tell you boys, hair is moving. For many years and almost a second mother to myself. So when she passed away last year, it hurt us both for a long time. Damn, everybody but Ellen stayed strong. She's not the type to let her feelings easily surface, so you gotta be a lot more perceptive to get what she truly feels. I used to proud myself in being capable of that. I felt like I knew her better than I knew myself. That's why this is all so strange and, frankly, terrifying. It's the ass. We were sleeping in bed and I was dreaming. I don't really remember what it was about, but for some reason I'm sure of it until I heard her voice very close to my ear. Knock, 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 knock. She was caressing my hair gently while sitting in bed and looking below at me. I slowly opened my eyes, groggy from sleep. Hey, what is it, baby? She kept looking at me, fixated, and repeated, Knock, knock. Knock, knock. I glanced at the digital clock on top of the dresser. 3.27 a.m. I had work in only a few hours. What is it, Ellen? She paused. Please answer the joke, dear. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Fine. I accepted, mostly because I was expecting some kind of surprise. Ellen wasn't the type to do what she was doing for no reason. Who's there? Her smile opened up and she answered, Not me, so don't answer the door. I kept looking at her, dumbfounded. What was that supposed to be? Right. Is that it? I is that the joke? Yes, she said, laying on the couch and covering herself with a blanket. Thank you for answering. <sighs> So don't answer the door. I answered, oh, closing no. my eyes and going back to sleep. Right. The next morning, things went as usual. I only remembered the strange conversation while I was alone in the bathroom brushing my teeth and he wasn't sure it. if it had truly happened or if it was he just a weird dream. Pearly white so we had our breakfast together and she was acting normal, reading something aloud from a fashion magazine. Frankly, I wasn't paying much attention. That's so I took the opportunity to ask about last night. He said Initially, breakfast. she didn't seem to know what I was talking about. Then her eyes fixated on he me, said and the same smile from last night crossed her face. He said breakfast? He said breakfast. Oh, I was... I don't know what the fuck His was noodles were soft. That's, that's spaghetti. Hold on. Now I got to see what, what you're talking about. We're going to rewind and see. You say he said breakfast. Hey, I'm not knocking the fact that people have breakfast, lunch, and dinner throughout the day. But he said... He said breakfast. He said breakfast. About to see right now. My teeth and wasn't sure if it had truly happened or if it was just a weird dream. 
So we had our breakfast together, and she was acting definitely normal. said breakfast. He, he definitely said him. breakfast. Frankly, I wasn't paying much attention, so I took the opportunity to ask about last night. Initially, she didn't seem to know what I was talking about. Then her eyes fixated on me, and the same smile from last night crossed her face briefly, and I knew it wasn't just a dream. She told me it wasn't anything of importance and stopped paying attention when I asked more inquisitively. And even though I shouldn't, I gave up. I had work and other matters to attend to and just brushed off the weird event thinking it wouldn't happen again. But the following night, I woke up to her voice. Knock, knock. Oh, no. A pause. Knock. Is it what is it now? I said. Ellen, what are you doing? Knock, knock, knock. She repeated. This time, she wasn't even touching me, just sitting in bed, looking at me with that same smile. But her eyes seemed larger, and she blinked in longer intervals. I looked at the clock, once again, 3.27 a.m. Ellen, come on, <sighs> what is it? You gotta work in a few hours. Can't have the luxury of waking up in the middle of the night to answer knock-knock jokes. Knock-knock, knock. He's getting a little... This is getting creepy, you know. I'm not sure if this is some gag you've been doing, but I don't like it. Answer it. No. Knock, knock, knock. I sighed, but also let a small laugh escape. It was creepy, of course, but she was also my Ellen, so it didn't bother me as much as it should. He <laughs> also my Ellen. Fine. Who is there? I answered in a playful tone. Not me. So don't answer the door. For some reason, I felt a chill down my spine. It was the same answer as before, and I still didn't get what it meant. But the way she said it, with a strange, monotone voice, contrasted well with her smile and the fact that I had no idea what she meant by that. What does that mean? I asked. I, I really and don't get it. And they say the strangest she things happen at, at, at 3 a.m. I felt a throb in my heart, but did the same. Next day, we talked again about what was happening. She was very evasive with my questions, and I barely got her to say anything. It was almost as if she couldn't talk about it, which was very strange, considering we talk about pretty much everything. I told her I needed to be well-rested for work, something she should understand well, and wasn't liking her little gag every night. She just nodded, and I decided to not press further, as I didn't want to hurt her feelings and had work to attend to. When I got back home, we had dinner, watched a movie, and went to bed. I bet you didn't have pancake. Knock. I opened my eyes faster this time nah. around. In fact, I barely that got any sleep. I just knew she would do it again and kept thinking about it the whole time. Glanced at the clock. 3.27 a.m. Knock. Knock. Okay. I thought about it more than just pretending I was asleep and she wouldn't wake me up. So I closed my eyes slowly, hoping that she hadn't seen me opening them in the first place and stayed quiet. Knock. Knock. She continued. She didn't stop. I regulated my breathing, but she kept going. Knock. Knock. I'm not answering your f***ing joke, Ellen. Stop it. Knock. Knock. I ignored, but she kept going. She had never been this insistent with anything before. I tried to ignore it, but it was getting on my nerves. And frankly, I felt scared. Why was Ellen doing this? Why every night at the same exact time down to the minute? Why wouldn't she let me sleep until I answered her? Knock. Knock. I got up in a sudden movement. God damn it, Ellen. I was ready for a discussion, but when I finally glanced at her, it was as if all the strength was drained from me. She wasn't smiling. She wasn't blinking. Just staring right at me, fixated like an animal, and her mouth was moving slowly, and she didn't stop. Knock. Knock. I didn't know how to react or what expression I had when I saw her, but my heart skipped a beat. Hey, bro. It was terrifying, as if her gaze froze me in place. A thousand <laughs> yards there. Knock. Knock. Who, who's there? I Keep asked, saying knock. feeling as if it was the only way out of that nightmare. Not me. So don't answer. She said weakly. Ellen slowly closed her eyes and laid down. I kept staring at her while she fell into what seemed to be a deep sleep. I got up and left. I walked downstairs and sat down at the couch in the living room, staring at the night sky outside and absorbing the quiet of the neighborhood. My heart was beating fast and it didn't slow down. Yeah, I was too scared to sleep in the same room as my girlfriend, all because of a 
knock knock joke. Yeah. Mm. But it was nice. unnatural. I thought about something. calling someone. I thought about it all being some kind of sleep related issue, such as some type of sleepwalking, but it didn't make any sense. I felt so tired and decided that early in the morning I would call an old friend who's a psychologist and get the opinion of a professional. Something was wrong with Ellen. I stayed in the couch as the day rose, and once Ellen woke up, she was acting normal again. She even asked me why I wasn't in bed. I didn't answer. In fact, I didn't speak to her until we left for work. She seemed very upset, but I wouldn't do anything about it. Once I got to work, I called my friend, told him everything that was happening in as much detail as I'm describing now. Right. He didn't seem as worried as I figured, but we agreed to make I thought that was the... week. Now I just needed to convince <sighs> Ellen to come with me. I received plenty of text messages from her. She seemed very worried, sad, and even confused. As she should. She apologized a lot, and it broke my heart a little. I felt cool. bad. I shouldn't have. But I answered her. I understand her though. It wouldn't happen. Don't know that. His girl going through it. He don't know how to help her. But he and did that. Up here crying, and you gonna see his heart what? Well, I'm saying he did that to himself. Right, but he so. don't know how to help his girl. Oh he thinks she going crazy. The appointment, and she seemed reluctant, but agreed to go. What was he me. supposed to say? So we made up. In the morning. This was well, the girl. The girl I knew ever since I was six years old. He was old. the one that was annoying her. Oh yeah, had do it just care of him for years. Just say hey. As cool. much as that strange behavior creeped me out, she wasn't doing anything particularly frightening or even dangerous, so for a brief while I convinced myself I should give her another chance. When I returned home from work, we stayed together. She even prepared my favorite meal. Yeah, my Ellen was acting as gentle and caring as I always remembered, and I slept with her in our bedroom, even though I was still a bit reluctant. Knock. I couldn't believe it. She promised me she wouldn't. Knock. I gazed at the clock. 327, you already Always. know clockwork, my Knock. nigga. I was laying on my stomach and I couldn't see her face. In fact, I didn't even bother to look at her. I was feeling more sad than scared at that point. Sad that she had broken her word. She like, who's do she there? Like, I answered, determined that's to just go back to That's what we're trying to see. see. We're trying to see. So, we should, so he shouldn't answer me. her and see what so she did. don't answer the door. Let's see if she I like, stayed quiet and closed my eyes. I just hoped I would lose her breath or yeah, what she did. Something. Because I feel like it's not her. I feel like she to took it over. Probably because I hadn't been able to rest since last night. The following morning, because the night before, anything to uh, she Only had very limited answered, responses. But I was expecting her to act the she same. She was running out of breath and shit. Trying to apologize, but so she probably didn't. if she don't answer, Mostly if you don't answer, then anything. she probably Almost just as if she had accepted it. suffocated herself. She also herself. looked tired, or at least a bit weak. I, I went to work, but I couldn't stop thinking about her. Didn't receive any messages either. Once I got back, we had the most silent dinner I ever had in my life, and she barely ate anything. I decided no, to that was a pad. the bedroom and sleep on the couch. No, no, that was a pad. I wasn't sure if it would stop that her, no dinner. but I held on to the hope that, that she pancakes. wouldn't go downstairs, only to tell me the same knock-knock joke again. I covered myself with a blanket, shaked off that uneasy feeling, and tried to sleep. I had a deep Versus sleep without sleep. dreams. Felt like I was lost in darkness. Then I heard breathing. Opened my eyes to see Ellen standing above me, looking at me with hey, big, bro. fixated eyes and dilated pupils that didn't seem to belong in such a completely neutral expression. Watching me sleep. I almost screamed in terror, jumped out of the couch, and her eyes followed me as I stumbled through the dark room, creating distance between us. For a moment, I was able to glimpse at the clock above the table. 3.27 a.m. Ellen, what are you doing? I asked desperate but she didn't move in fact she didn't say anything she just stared at me as if i was made of glass and she could see right through me then i heard a knock on the front door instinctively i looked in that direction it was followed by another knock and another something almost pounding at the door i glanced back at ellen and she was still staring at me slowly i got closer to the door don't and she didn't move it said don't the answer the door because it's not me who's there i screamed it stopped and then I heard a voice. John? John, can you hear me? Open the door, please. John, please open the door. I froze in place. The voice kept calling me, but I couldn't believe it. It was Ellen's voice coming from the other side of the door, but it couldn't be. I beg you, John, open the door. You don't it's answer. She she's was telling me. you. I swear, she's not me. Slowly, I turned my head to look at Ellen standing in front of the couch. She was looking at me, the same fixated eyes, and a terrible, wide hey. grin across her face. Who the switch the body? John, open the door. Please, you have to trust me. 
I stayed still, not knowing what to do, and I don't remember what happened after that. I just woke up in my bedroom. The digital clock indicates it's 4.21 a.m. Ellen isn't by my side. I'm completely alone. I'm trembling uncontrollably, and I don't know what's going on. What happened? I don't remember what happened after I saw her terrible grin. I don't know if I opened the door. I tried to look for my phone, to see if I could call the police, or at least someone that I know, but I left it downstairs. Mm. All I have is Ellen's laptop, and it's where I'm writing this right now, to get advice, because I can't go downstairs. The corridor is dark, very dark, almost- Eek, bro. It's gotta be an apartment. It's an apartment. But why he open the door if he's not hungry? It's an apartment? Mm-hmm. Look at- This shit room. big as fuck. Me into the room, and I can hear a faint scratching sound this, coming this, from this below. Story, what? what should I do? That can't be. I was working at the police station when I checked the. Sir, no sir, no sir, no sir, Denny. Hey Denny. <laughs> no sir, you ain't gonna do it like that, dog. <laughs> uh -oh. Hey, what happened to the story? You'd have made us sit through this sh thirteen minutes, bro. <laughs> And ye need gives no ending. What, am, what happened to the lady? Was the lady the same? The headline immediately caught my attention. Patients went missing from the hospital. The article mentioned that a few patients who were close to dying went missing, and nobody knows what happened to them. The first case was recorded two months ago, and the most recent one happened yesterday. The nurses can't find them. All of them were dying, so they couldn't escape the hospital. My wife also worked there, so I called her. Yeah, we have no idea what happened to them, she said. We've checked every corner of the buildings. I got home around so 7 p.m. My wife alive. was already home. She usually got home a few hours before me. Well, they had a house, I was looking for it's lunch, a different she store. came upstairs from the basement. What were you doing down there, I asked. I put some old broken chairs there, she responded. I'll probably renovate the whole basement soon. Why? I raised my eyebrows. Since we moved there, we hadn't used the basement. It was strange. There was nothing interesting down there, just a few spiders. Why not? I have no better thing to do. I finally agreed. The following day, I went to work again. We got a call from the hospital to go there and investigate the missing persons because their families want answers to what happened to them. I drove there with Mark, another police officer. Dr. No, that, no, that, that call was... told us every two, information about the missing patient. He that even call had showed two us where we could find their bed. It had a two it engines. It was in the same room my wife was in. She was home at the time. She didn't work on Fridays. It seems like all the patients were really close to the hospital's back door, Mark said to Dr. Martin and me. What if they escaped there? Impossible. Dr. Whoa. Martin shook his head. <laughs> all of them were on their like final days. They couldn't walk, and we hadn't found any strange footprints leading out the hey, back no, door. Hey, no, these, hey. Also Just look, look at that. <laughs> what is that? What a wall. <laughs> it's outside. I'm confused as to what I'm looking that at. That wall is invisible. The wall invisible. Mm -hmm. The whole parking lot. Somebody would have seen it if they escaped there. What if someone smuggled them out, I theorized. It seems like all the missing patients were close to the back door. Someone well, why could everybody grab them the parking like lot them? and drop them in the car. But who, Dr. Martin asked. It was a fair question. Who could have done that and why? I have no idea, I responded. My wife also works here and hadn't noticed anything strange. We will speak to the staff here next week, Mark said. Make sure that everyone will be here. After that, we went back to the police station to write some reports. Hey, then spoke about it to our boss. I arrived <laughs> home at the usual time and didn't call. find my wife. I heard strange noises from the basement and wanted to go down there. But then she came upstairs. Hi, she greeted me. So, are you working on that basement, I asked. She looked strange. I thought I saw a small amount of blood on her face. Mm. Do you need any help? No, I can do it alone. Are you sure? I can help. I'll be home the whole weekend anyway. Thanks, but I'll handle it. What are you doing anyway there? We don't need that basement Why that much. Why do you keep asking questions? Stop asking me so many questions. Right. She shouted at me frustrated. I was surprised. Sorry, I'm tired. Look, just don't go down there. Please, she said in a calmer tone, then went to sleep. The following day quickly went by. She was in the basement almost all the time, and I was reading some books. She then told me she was going to the market to buy some food. After she left the house, I came out of my room and went to the basement door. It was strange, as I still heard some noises coming from below. I was curious. I opened the door and looked down the stairs. I only saw darkness. 
so I used my phone to illuminate the mirror walls. I slowly walked down the stairs. The noises were getting louder. Alright. After about 20 steps, I arrived there. I immediately regretted it. There were some steel cages inside, and in every cage <laughs> there was something. It's not funny. Something I can't it's even not funny. It's just serious. Old, rotten bodies. Some of them looked like the missing persons from the hospital. I froze as I couldn't know what to do. Damn, and the bro. worst wasn't the fact that the bodies were there. They were moving. Their eyes were white. One of them grabbed the cell door with his rotten hand. I finally ran back to the stairs, trying Damn, to get out of there. Damn, bro, you don't even know who you love, man. At the top of the oh, stairs, shit. I was my wife standing with angry eyes. I told you not to go Why you there, got no she said slowly. What the hell are you doing down there? I shouted to her. What are those things? These are the patients that went missing. I'm going to be the greatest scientist ever known, she responded. Her voice was confident. I felt like I didn't so know her. Folks. I stopped death itself. Oh. I saved those patients from death. Mm. I had no idea what to do, so I just tried to run out of there, pushing her aside. But as I was trying to push her away, she bit, she bit my finger. I screamed because of the pain, but tried to run out anyway. I looked down at my hand, and one of my fingers was missing. He bit the finger off. I ran up to the bathroom, then locked the door behind what me. What the fuck? She Mike Tyson. Don't hide from me, she shouted She's from crazy. Inside. You should be proud of me. I'll save humanity. As she was shouting, I found some bandages to stop the bleeding from my finger. She kicked the door multiple times, then stabbed it with a kitchen knife. My only chance was to escape out the window. I opened it, then crawled outside. The only problem was that the bathroom was on the floor. I had to jump. The pain in my legs was horrible as I fell to the ground. It's okay, I get up. I immediately called Mark to get to my house in his car. He then took me to the hospital to patch me up. It's too the part, following bro. day, I told them and the police <laughs> what happened. Yeah, we figured there was something wrong, Mark said. Your house burned down last night just after I brought you to the hospital. The firefighters found the bodies you were talking about, but your wife is missing. Mm. We have no idea where she is. Mm -mm. Okay, so first thing I want to say is mess up. Mess up. You're not going to trip over the first story and not get to an ending. Then you're going to jump to another story. Right, Denny. And then cut the ending off, too. Hey, Denny. Mess up. Uh, no, it, it, it was good. I like the story, the, the story behind those. Just the animation just is throwing me off just just a little bit. <laughs> like the car had two front sides. I didn't know which one was the trunk. Um The head was the hospital. The hospital wall was missing. I'm gonna need an explanation on the hospital, sir. <laughs> hey yo, oh. next hey next video. <laughs> Alright, so this next video is uh by Dead Bros Videos. Dead Op Bros Hoes. Open late for a short film. Yes, I did. It's 3 a.m. You late? What they want? This nigga, he, this nigga still cooked the shit. Oh, it's probably not 3 a.m. though. Keep it on 
don't know how to mind their business. Go ahead and get the people the food. Go back in the side and lock the door. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Three sixteen a.m. I'm telling you, that's hey around three a.m. Man, that's when things. That's when niggas need to be sleep. Weird things happen, man. I can't see nothing. Hello? Hello? Nah, where the flashlight come from, bro? <laughs> where the flashlight come from? Close, but we can't take your order. Can't take your order, dog. What time they close? What is he looking at? <laughs> he looking hard. What is he looking at? Smart, smart man. What time they close, though? Oh no, it's, it said 3, 3 a.m. And then why he gotta stay there? Yeah, how is you how is we printing anything? I didn't press nothing. I turned the phone off. But they can go back. Maybe he's safer inside. What is that? This is my bar. Ain't no way. Nah, ain't no way. <laughs> Open that door. They don't even know what to do. Nah, he black though. We don't do this. That's right. Grab your weapon. Even if it's a gun. Hey, look. I'm not even going to that door. I'm going to my car. <laughs> How he gonna get out the thing? How he gonna get out? I got the key. They killed the last person. They killed the last person. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's on the door. It's on the door. There's blood on the door. No, that's black, babe. It's black. Oh, what the fuck that is? No sir, no sir. Yeah, we ain't leaving now. Can it come to the basement? Yeah, I'm just make sure everything locked, and I'm sleeping there for the night. No. Uh, I can't, I can't sleep there, right? I don't know what you're gonna do. But he can break in. He about to get it. I mean, the door already open by itself. Right. I'm get, but I gotta go. I gotta get to my car. You could try. Yeah, I'm gonna be dead, right? And I, I know you're lying. There's just a lot going on right now. Hold on. He on top of him. He on top of him. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Who's this? 
see, see, people always want to text something. Oh, that's just like the finger of the man, whoever it was. Thank you. I don't even know what we're looking at. You jumping, I can't even see. He cut the water off. What am I looking at, bro? <laughs> okay, I understand it. What's the noise? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm so confused. Hey. <laughs> hey, bro. The hay for me. It was the, the hey. That was better than the last one. And you already had it off. Boom. And it took me out of there. Where did he come from? Dead body. Mm. It was good. It was just too, I, I think it was a little too dark for me. Hold on. If I brighten this all the way up. My brightness is not all the way up. I mean, that could be my fault. I think it was a little too dark for me, though. I could not see what was going on. Could you see? It was a good thing, though. No, I couldn't see. You just jumping. <laughs> you can't even see what you jumping and at. The noise is, yeah. You just jumping. And yeah, that was a good spooky Saturday. <laughs> that right there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get up out of here, man. Let's get it. Uh, did some shit can speak on what I did. Uh, taking niggas, bitch, that's how I live. Jet blue, take a trip. Dump my cup, I need that sip. Heard he been talk, gon' taste this clip. Stay on my toes like I can't slip. She shaking ass and she like strip. Say